Well, good evening to you, friends. Pastor Ma Harden. Good evening, friends, and on behalf of Hands Up for Trad, a very warm welcome to you all. We're gathered here, of course, to acknowledge the contribution to our music and to Scottish life that has been made over the years by some outstanding musicians. Before we get to our first inductee, I'd like to invite up the Deputy Lord Provost, Kevin Cordell, Deputy Lord Provost of Dundee, for a few remarks. Kevin. Well, Feskermark. 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 Er Ashke Dunji, Er Son Nitrad, Davila Fikis Saga. So, ladies, gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome and good evening to tonight. It is a real privilege for me to be able to host this event for you tonight, and uh, I'm really hoping that you're all looking forward to it as much as I am. Now, it's a real privilege for Dundee to host the Trads again after a wee five-year absence, but particularly so on what I believe is your 20th anniversary, so congratulations on that. Now, anyone who has been to the Trads in person, or even just seen them on TV, know that the reputation you have for putting on a good show and showcasing the great cultural talent across our city is well deserved, and I want to thank you all for that. So I'm really just going to finish up by wishing you all the best tonight, you know, all the best of luck to the nominees in all the award categories, uh, categories and to say, Tap alive the whole of Shinnick. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Lord Provost. And uh, I'm just going to call on uh, Donald Campbell now from MG Albo just to say a few things in reply. It's great to be back in Dundee uh, with the Trads and for us at MG Alba it's a great honour and a pleasure to be sponsoring the event for the 15th year uh, in succession. Uh, I think this occasion is also so much of a tribute to the people who have worked so hard over the past two years in the music industry uh, through very difficult times uh, you bring us all so much joy and also in these uncertain times also a great deal of hope um, and enjoyment as we uh, look to the future and strive with, with the present. So this is the 15th year of our sponsorship. The first one was just after BBC Alibaba launched and uh, I hope you're all excited to know that at 9 o'clock tonight you're going to be live on BBC Alibaba. Whoa! So I'd ask you all to be on your best behaviour. <laughs> But I know who I'm talking to, I know my audience, so uh, yeah, I, I do hope you enjoy tonight. Um, the, uh, there'll be more uh, between Christmas and New Year on BBC Alpha on the Wednesday between Christmas and New Year. And of course, we've got, I couldn't go without making a plug for BBC Alpha over that time. A great festive schedule uh, as well of programmes. A lot of them musical, you'll be glad to know. Um, it's uh, a great pleasure, as I said, to be able to, to be here with you. Uh, if you go to the far end of Sky and Luke West, um, there's, there's an inscription there at Tuntum Castle, and the inscription says, He can sue go creeth, ach madi kyol is school. It says, the world may come to an end, but love and music will endure. That's what we are here for. I'd like to thank Simon and Percy so much for bringing us here to celebrate that, this world-class gathering of Gaelic Scots English uh, music communities from across Scotland and generations uniting to celebrate the very best uh, as, as well. So, thank you. I'm with Oscar with Joe and Ike Akabulu. What a thank you. very much, Donald. Um, before we get to our first inductee, I'd, I'd like to thank one or two people uh, or organisations. First, the Creative Scotland for their continued support for Hands Up for Trad, to Fashion and Gale for their specific sponsorship of the Hall of Fame, and finally uh, to MG Alba as headline sponsors for the Trad Awards. A grateful thanks to all of them. Thank you. Now to our, our first inductee, uh, 
The first inductee, Jim McLean, grew up as a Paisley buddy in a household filled with music and radical politics. A politics that indeed saw Jim go to prison as a young man rather than do his national service and take part in what turned out to be the debacle of Suez. And these and many other experiences in music and audio engineering informed Jim's songwriting and led to him becoming an in-demand producer and songwriter, working in the 60s with the likes of Nigel Denver, Alistair MacDonald and Fraser Bruce, uh, who's also here this evening, uh, before forming his own Nevis Records with his wife Alison. You'll maybe know many of Jim's songs without actually knowing who wrote them. Indeed, many of them have received the ultimate accolade of the folk songwriter, the perception that his songs have been around longer than he has. Songs like The Massacre of Glencoe, The Shores of Sutherland, Silver Darlings and Tibby Dunbar are a case in point. But still writing songs, still commenting, and very much a presence here tonight, please welcome to the Hall of Fame, Jim McLean. singer-songwriter, so I had to rely on good folk singers to do my material. It sometimes meant that lots of it went to tradition, as traditional songs, so I missed out a lot of hate me there. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, the songs are out, and I'm grateful for this presentation. Thanks very much. Next up is Katrina Garbett. Born in Benbecula, Katrina is a singer, a piper, a teacher and a storyteller whose songs and tunes go back across the centuries, back to the Fenia and the Oceanic eras even. She grew up in a family full of pipers, as she says, going to sleep and waking up to the sounds of the pipes nearly every day of her childhood. The first tune she learned was the 70 seconds farewell to Aberdeen, back when she was about 9 or 10. And at the age of 85, she still continues to play. 20 years ago, she contributed her extensive knowledge to the School of Scottish Studies Tobarandokas Kist of Riches online resource, ensuring that her deep knowledge would be available to future generations. Another important contribution was her co-editing with her nephew, Neil, a book of previously unpublished tunes by her brother, the late Callum Campbell. Katrina Garbett, uh, she's not here this evening, but uh, if you could express your appreciation for Katrina. Thank you. Mike Wellens is a one-off. He's a multi-instrumentalist who can play in many different genres, from blues to Scottish dance music. He plays electric and acoustic guitars, both 6 and 12 string. He plays the muthi and the drums, and not forgetting one of the things that he's most famous for is show-stopping mouth percussion. Many years ago in the late 60s, he teamed up with Ali Bain when the fiddler first came down from Shetland, flat-picking and backing Ali's virtuosic fiddle, which was an unusual feature of the Scottish folk scene at that time. Hard as that is to imagine in an era of brilliant folk fiddlers. His connection with Ali took him into the traditional Scots-Irish band, the Boys of the Loch. But it's as a blues musician that Mike is known and loved not only in Scotland, but all over Scandinavia, where he lived for a time, and the Low Countries. He's back in Scotland now, back in his native borders, and continues to amaze and entertain with his one-man blues band, Mike Wells. This is indeed an honour, I have to say. Uh, <coughs> I, uh, I've had a long career in music. Uh, 
I was playing with Scottish dance bands and that when I was about 12 years old. And some of you may remember the, the fortnightly whist drives in village halls, uh, followed by the dance. And uh, it was a great experience. And uh, I kind of moved away from that and uh, got into the blues. Uh, met up with a fiddle player from Shetland called Ali Bain, and we did about three or four years together, toured the continent and uh, played in America. Uh, there was a wonderful story, we played in the University of Chicago, and uh, <clears throat> I remember we walked into the foyer, and there was this huge poster, and it said, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, Aretha Franklin and her soul band, and from Scotland, Ali Bain and Mike Wellens. <laughs> and I remember, and Ali says, I tell you, boy, I want that for me bedroom. <laughs> but by the time we got finished, the students had nicked it. And Ali kept harping on about that the whole tour. We did a whole, a whole tour of the States. And uh, we went back again in the, after the Kent State massacre. And we played there. And we, 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 had, a, we had a great time. And, uh, like every duo, you know, you reach a point where you want to move on, and we did. But uh, it was a great experience, and uh, to play with one of the great fiddle players of all time, I have to say. Um, if possible, I am noted for my moody playing. I'm not going to do the mouth percussion, but uh, I'm going to play something if it's possible. Can I do it? Yeah. This is. Uh this is in memory of Rab Noakes, dear Rab, who passed away, so I hope you enjoy this. Sean Connery famous, famously said of Carol Matheson that she has a throat that is surely touched by God. And her vocals have fronted one of the country's greatest folk bands, Capper Cayley, since she was a teenager performing in her local village hall in Argyll. Stages she's graced since then include the closing ceremony of the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in 2014, and more recently, uh, the, the funeral of the Queen. With Caber Cayley, Karen has enjoyed a stellar career. The band have sold more than a million albums, performed in over 30 countries, 
and featured in Hollywood movies. She's released several acclaimed solo albums and been involved in many high-profile projects and collaboration worldwide, including the BBC series The Transatlantic Sessions, performing with the likes of James Taylor, Amy Lou Harris, the McGarrigal sisters and Nancy Griffith, not to mention a roster of top Scottish musicians. She was awarded an OBE in the 2006 New Year's Honours list and tonight is honoured further by being inducted into the Scots Traditional Music Hall of Fame, Karen Matheson. Mick West is one of our finest interpreters of traditional Scots song and has an ear too for an Irish song. He's performed across the world, including in Russia and Japan, but it's in his hometown of Glasgow where he's been a key figure for many years in putting and keeping folk music on the map. It was, however, at the other end of the country in Cornwall, where Mick's family had relocated in his teenage years, that his love of folk music was sparked. And when he came back to Glasgow, he almost immediately formed a band, Moll and Diner, which featured many youthful luminaries of the Scottish folk scene that you would recognise now. He was also responsible for starting the Partick Folk Club in Glasgow's West End in 2002, famous for their uh, bowls of soup. And for years, he was the man behind the Partick Folk Festival. Mick was traditional song tutor at Plockton School of Musical Excellence, and of course, the main man in the Mick West Band. And it's the Mick West Band's guitarist, Frank McLaughlin, who will collect the award on Mick's behalf. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> I'm very happy to um, be here to represent Mick tonight and to accept this, um, indu his induction into the traditional Hall of Fame. Um, I've had the privilege of, of working with Mick over 20 years or so, um, and we've had some great times together, performing as a duo or in band, as they said, around the country and further afield. Um, as we all know, Mick is a phenomenal singer. He's got his rich, sort of emotive, emotive voice. He can literally silence a crowded pub. I've seen it on a number of occasions. Um, I think at the core of what Mick does, in addition to his performing, has been his real desire to encourage and bring people together through traditional music and song. Um, as, as Dave said, um, he spent many years teaching and encouraging young folk coming up through the scene. Um, in Plockton, set up the Partick Folk Club, which he ran um, for many years as a, a fantastic community resource. Um, he also worked for many years with other community groups across Glasgow. Um, I would say Mick nurtures the community through music, and it's fitting that we recognise and celebrate that. Um, I have to say, he's also been a, a big influence on my own children over the years, always there to encourage and support their music. Um, giving them opportunities to perform at an early age. Um, Uncle Mick could be quite mis mischievous at times, however. Um, like the time he brought them both magnifying glasses and taught them how, as youngsters, how to focus the sun's light <laughs> to the detriment of our living room floor. Um, unfortunately, Mick can't be here tonight. He had a stroke in 2020 and is unable to come along but I'll be seeing Mick um, on Saturday, next weekend, um, and I'll take this um, award to him and pass on our collective love and best wishes. Thanks. Thank you, Frank. To another Frank now, uh, Frank Beckhofer and Jean Beckhofer were an inseparable pair who contributed a great deal to the folk scene in Scotland, and Edinburgh in particular. They met when introduced by a mutual friend when Frank was a research student at Cambridge University, and Shetlander Jean was working there as a, a child psychologist. 
It was Jean who had the initial interest in folk music as a singer, uh, but their interest led them to Edinburgh Folk Club, where Jean was a frequent floor singer and one-time chair, while Frank also became immersed in the running of the club as a secretary and a genial compere. Although sometimes an acerbic commentator, as well as those of you who, who know him will testify. He was also a long-standing trustee of Edinburgh Folk Festival, seeing it through several peaks and troughs and several directors. Folk club involvement eventually led to the setting up of the Beckhofer Agency and uh, as I mentioned he was a famously acerbic critic and he brought his very high standards to bear on the roster of the agency which included names such as Nick Jones, Archie Fisher, Pete Coe and Tommy Sands. Frank and Jean were both very sociable and welcoming whether within the folk club or at one of the Cayleys at their home in Cramond where they loved to entertain. Frank died in 2018 and Jean now lives in Manchester, unfortunately now suffering from Alzheimer's, but uh, she's in Manchester close to their son, Sean. Uh, Sean couldn't be here this evening, but once again, let's hear it for Frank and Jean Beckhofer. <laughs> And just to conclude, uh, we have three further inductees to the Hall of Fame who will who have either received their awards previously or will receive them at the main awards ceremony later on. Uh, Anne Donovan received the Jan Janet Paisley Award for Services to Scots at the Scots Language Awards a few weeks ago here in Dundee. Well, Anne Lorne Gillis and Caroline McLennan will receive their awards for services to Gaelic and the Hamish Henderson Award for services to traditional music, respectively. So let's, uh, let's hear it in advance for all of them. <laughs> and that, uh, that includes, uh, concludes this, uh, this short induction ceremony. Uh, thanks again to Hands Up for Trad for uh, initiating the Hall of Fame and congratulations once again to all of tonight's inductees. Thank you very much. We'll see you later on. Thank you.